Lately I have been talking about uh, the rise of the Antichrist and uh, the rapture of the church and uh, things of that nature. In fact, my last uh, article uh, video was on uh, the European Union uh, the, about a secret meeting that was being held between foreign ministers uh, regarding electing or selecting a superpower leader that would encompass both the economic and po foreign policy uh, positions in one. He would be uh, uh, more or less a super leader for the country and would represent this uh, this new EU uh, in the future. Now, uh, uh, I, you know, the Bible says that there will only be ten nations at some point in time in the Antichrist kingdom. Now, that necessarily means it's going to be right off the bat. But at some point in time, uh, he will lead ten powerful nations uh, who and what they uh, and what nations will they will be uh, is unknown at this time, but the scriptures do say that at some point in time ten nations will uh, conglomerate and they will become a powerful force throughout the world. But before anything can happen, as we well know, the rapture of the church must take place. Well, what will happen after the rapture of the church? Well, I believe that, uh, as I've said, that chaos and panic, both uh, politically, economically. And socially will undertake uh, will, will overtake the world, and the world will truly be in a state of panic. And I, you know, I really believe that the world will see this moment as the rapture of the church. In fact, I I see in Revelation uh, chapter six in the latter part of that chapter, it states that men from the smallest to the greatest, from the richest to the poorest, uh, will see this moment and uh, will hide themselves from the face of God. In fact, I believe that this, this, the, the Bible says that, uh, is interpreted, that this, this, the uh, uh, sky will actually roll back as a scroll, and they will actually see God sitting on his throne. And they'll say, hide us from the face of him that sits upon the throne, for we know now that his wrath has come. To me, it's pretty plain that the world will see uh, this moment as from God. I really believe that when the rapture does take place, that people will fully expect uh, the uh, wrath of God to come upon them, but there, but time will pass, and the wrath will not come. But at some point in time, that wrath will come. Now, of course, I've stated many times there probably will be a, a gap of time between the rapture and the rise of the Antichrist. How long that will be is uh, anyone's guess. It could be days, it could be weeks, months, uh, and it may even be years. But I doubt it'll be years. And uh, then uh, at some point in time, uh, the Antichrist will rise. Now, a lot of people believe right now that Satan is out there plotting against God, uh, that they both know that the rapture of the church is about ready to take place, and Satan's about ready to time his deception to uh, counteract the rapture. But the truth of the matter is, is that Satan, nowhere in the Bible, does it state that Satan has ever known uh, the future. In fact, uh, the only time the Bible says that Satan knows that his days are, are uh, uh, numbered and that he knows his time is short is in Revelation chapter 12 just after he's kicked out of heaven and confined to the earth then he knows his time is short but there's no time there's no word ever in the Bible in which uh, he knows that his days are numbered now has God put it in Satan's mind to do his will absolutely uh, he very well could be doing the will of God right now uh, planning out his rise to power and it's actually God giving him that plan in his own mind thinking that's his own now that very well could be the case he could be searching out his antichrist right now not knowing that uh, that's the very plan of God and of course we know nothing goes on in this world without uh, the express permission of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, so Satan is just uh, basically Satan is just a pawn in God's hands to do his will and nothing more now, of course, I fully expect there will be a number of people who will disagree with this because uh, they want this to simply be a Satan against God type of battle. But the truth of the matter is, is the victory is already won. God's already got everything under control. And uh, like I said, Satan is nothing more than a player in a play that God already knows the ending to. There is no dra dramatic climax. There is no surprise ending. We already know who the victor is, and we already know how it's going to be won. But getting back to the scenario and timeline, it's uh, the next thing on the plate will be uh, the Antichrist will rise to uh, uh, world-renowned world power, 
and he will make peace with Israel and many. Now the many, I believe, will probably be many of the states that are were involved in the Arab Spring. Uh, I also believe that Syria and Iran will be involved in this peace accord. If nothing more, it will be a facade peace treaty. Because uh, not too far after that, I believe that once Israel gives up uh, some of their land and also uh, does allow a a Palestinian state to be established, I do believe that the Gog and Magog war uh, will commence. Now we know when the first sealed judgment is broken that uh, uh, a man on a white horse comes about, we believe that's the Antichrist, who will come and make peace with Israel. But then the second seal judgment is also broken. It says that uh, peace is taken from the earth. Now I believe that I mean this is just a scenario uh, of speculation on my part but I believe that the Gog and Magog war could set off this uh, cataclysmic war uh, in which God destroys Russia and their allies as they come down and attack Israel and uh, I believe that uh, that may be the time also when peace is taken from the earth and this becomes a nuclear holocaust whether or not this will encompass the uh, Gog and Magog war. Nobody really knows. Now that's just speculation on my part. I also believe it's possible that a Psalm 83 scenario could commence at this at, uh, during this time as well. Now, do I believe that it's the Psalm 83 war prediction? No, I believe it's a Psalm 83 type scenario, meaning that yes, the nations that surround Israel very well could attack Israel, but I don't believe necessarily because Psalm 83 war. Uh, list these nations. Again, I've stated my uh, what I believe is regarding Psalm 83 Ward many times in other videos, but so I won't rehash that and all. But uh, and you know there are others that believe that the, a Psalm 83 War scenario could take place also at Armageddon. Not again, not because of the predictions of the Psalm 83 War, but because that the nations that surround Israel just happen to be the enemies of God and also of Israel. Now, whether or not this will be a simultaneous type situation in which uh, the apocalypse, and for which one quarter of the world's population will be destroyed at one time, will encompass or be started by a Gog Magog war, uh, by the Gog Magog war, and a Psalm 83 type scenario, is unknown. But they may very well be separate wars. I don't know uh, what the case will be on that because. Uh, uh, it's not. It's, it's, there's no clear-cut timeline as to when these wars will take place. We do know that the Gog and Magog war will be in the latter days, uh, but uh, we don't know when any of the other items will take place. So we do know that um, Armageddon will take place at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. And I can only say that uh, we can surmise that the that the countries that surround Israel will, at some point in time. Uh, attack Israel because they're all mortal enemies of Israel and the Bible says that every uh, the, the nations will come against Israel but we will be crushed to powder that's found in, Z in Zechariah 12:3. so it's it's only common sense to believe that uh, when the nations come against Israel that these surrounding nations will likely be a part of that uh, war scenario but moving forward with the timeline I believe that once this war uh, this ultimate war does take place uh, after one quarter of the world's population is killed and on the verge of, of extinction and uh, uh, starvation, uh, I believe that the Antichrist will take complete control. He will be uh, possessed by Satan at some point in time and uh, he will declare himself to be God. Uh, that's as far as I'm going to go with this for now. You know, but uh, you know, there's something that's far worse than the tribulation period, and that is being cast alive in the lake of fire. You know, at some point in time, we're all going to face God, and we can either face God as a child of the King, as a Christian, or we can face God in rejecting His ultimate sacrifice, and that is uh, believing that Jesus died on the cross and that He uh, died for the sins of the world. And if you go to hell, it it will be with your sins paid for. You know, the only way you can go to heaven is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And I wanted to encourage you today to make that decision for Christ. Uh, if you don't know him as Savior, uh, your time's running out. And I would encourage you to make that decision as quickly as possible. This is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.